Hey y'all, so today is 6A, characterizing data. We're switching gears into statistics. All right, so away we go. A statistic is re resistant if its value is not affected by much, is not affected much by extreme values, large or small in the data set. Extreme values are values that are much larger or much smaller than the rest of the data are, are and they're called outliers. So an outlier is a number that could be um, on a test, like a 20, okay? When the rank, when like most of the class got grades between like 50 and 85. Another outlier can be on the top if it's like a 98 or 100. So outliers can be on the bottom and the top, meaning smaller or larger. To find the mean is the list of numbers to find the mean of a list of numbers, I cannot talk today. You add them, then divide by how many numbers there are. The mean is not resistant to outliers, okay? Meaning outliers change the mean. Outliers do change or affect the mean, okay? So, an outlier can make the mean go up or down. A mean, this is generally what you think of when you think of a quote, average, okay? When you think average, like a test average, the mean is what generally people are requesting of me. So you add up all the numbers and then divide by how many people took the test. So if I want the weight in pounds of a group of dogs, then we calculate the mean which is also X bar by saying 19 plus 20 plus 22 plus 24 plus 26 divided by one, two, three, four, five. So basically what does every dog essentially weigh approximately? So 19 plus 20 plus 22 plus 24 plus 26. Now divided by five is, oops, sorry, you can't see that is 22.2, 22.2 pounds. So on average, these five dogs are 22.5 pounds, oh, two. I need to talk and say what I actually mean. The median is a different version of an average, okay? So median is the number that splits the data set in half. So that half the data values are less than the median and the other half of the data values are greater than the median. The median is resistant to outliers. This means that outliers do not affect the mean, or excuse me, the average. And up here, I shouldn't say mean, I mean average. There we go. So these are all ways to calculate an average. So like approximately what's happening with the data. So we would want to, to find a, me, a median. And then I, or I know I recall median meaning the middle is that if you think of um, if you're driving on a road, okay, and there's that thing in the middle. So here's your cars. Let's see, I'm not an artist. So please bear with me. So that's my car, right? Here's the little thing in the middle. Um, that's the median. We call that the median, right? The barrier between um, forward and backwards direction or north, south, east, west, whatever. So median, middle. The median is the data point in the middle. So you put them in numerical order. Then you determine the number of values there are. If it is odd, you just take the one in the middle. Like for example, where if we're doing this data set, the median would be 22 because there's five. So if we just squish in, the median is exactly in the middle. If there's two, I mean, if there's two middles or n is even, then you take the two numbers and you divide by two. So let's say middle number one, plus middle number two divided by two is your median. 
Then we have the mode. So the third way to calculate a an average mode. I think of like if you ever order dessert a la mode, that means with a scoop of ice cream. And if you love ice cream, you want the most ice cream. Okay. So mode is the data set or value that appears the most. So mode, I think a la mode, I want the most ice cream. What's the data point that has the most? I know it's weird, it's funky, but it works for my brain, so I'm giving it to you. So if two or more values are tied for the most frequent, they are all considered to be modes. Okay. A data set with exactly two modes is called bimodal. If the values all have the same frequency, we say the data set has no mode. Okay. Meaning like, um, this one, for example, if I have two, two, four, four, five, five, seven, seven, eight, eight, that would have no mode because there's two of each. They all have the same frequency. Remember frequency from 5A, uh, 5C, 5A, I don't remember, from chapter five earlier is how many times the, the number is repeated or the data points repeated. Okay, so an average via the mode is the number that re re happens the most. So we're just gonna do a couple of examples. A group of seven students was asked, how many hours did you watch television last week? They said 13, five, 16, 14, four, 10, 18. So we're gonna find the mean, median, and mode. Let's do the mode first. Um, 13 is only once, 5 is only once, 16 is only once, 14 once. They're all only once, right? So that means that we have no mode, not applicable. There's no mode because none of the numbers repeat. The median, remember now we have to list them all in numerical order. That's 4, 5. So four, five, what? I'm looking at 10, 13, 14, 13, 14, 16, 18. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's seven numbers. So we're just gonna sandwich into the middle. One, two, three. 13 is in the middle. There's three to the left three to the right. So it is the median. It's the number in the middle. And then the mean, we're actually going to add all of these numbers together. Oops. Helps if I can write. And then divide by how many there are. Again, that's seven. So we have, let me try over here. 4 plus 5 plus 10 plus 13 plus 14 plus 16 plus 18. Let's make sure I got them all. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yep. Divide by 7. So that is 11 point, let's say 4, 3. And that's it. That's all you're doing. So I want y'all to try 3 by yourself. Pause the video and then come back to see how you did. Okay, hopefully you're back. So let's do mean. Remember, you're going to add up all the numbers. That's one plus two plus three. There's three threes plus one six, two sevens, one eight, and one eleven. And divide by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's make sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Divide by 10. One plus two plus three plus three plus three plus six plus seven plus seven plus eight plus 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Always good to make sure you got it all in there. 51 is the sum. Now we're going to divide by 10. So 5.1. So the mean is 5.1. The median is the number in the middle, right? So again, it's already, or we're gonna take, again, we're gonna take the number in the middle. It's in numerical order, so that saves us some trouble. 
we know we have an even number, so we are going to take the average of the middle two. So I like to just kind of walk my fingers inward if I can. So it's three and six. Notice that there's four numbers below, four numbers above, so I know that we're good. So this is three plus six divided by two because it's the, it's the mean of the median. I know, it's kind of silly. So three plus six is what, nine? divided by two, which is 4.5. So the median is 4.5 and the mode is the number that occurs the most. Three repeats three times. So that is three. So these are three different ways to calculate the average. Then we have symmetry. So a histogram, remember a histogram is a bar graph where whoop, there's no space between the bars. Okay, A histogram is a bar graph with no space between the bars. So if its right half is a mirror image of its left half, we have exact symmetry, okay? symmetric. Very few histograms are perfectly symmetric, but many are approximately symmetric, okay? So if you have this really nice bell curve, which we'll talk about later on, we have perfect symmetry, woohoo! But most of them are skewed. A histogram is skewed if one side or the tail is longer than the other. We have right skewed or positively skewed if the tail is on the right side. I know it, I generally think, oh, well the hump's on the left, so it's, it's left skewed, but no. It's wherever the tail is. If the tail is on the right side, then it's right skewed. Here, this picture, the tail is on the left, so it is left skewed or negatively skewed, okay? Meaning negatively as the, outliers are pulling the averages down. Positively skewed, meaning outliers are pulling the averages up. The mean especially, right? Because the mean is most affected by outliers. Then there's unimodal, like a unicycle, meaning one, one wheel, unicycle, one hump, okay? It only has one motor peak, bimodal, two humps or modes or peak, bicycle, two, to uh, tires, right? So unicycle, one hump, bimodal, two humps. So given skewedness, what's the relationship? Well, the relationship between the mean, median, and mode depend on the skewedness or symmetry of the data. So remember that this is right skewed or positively skewed. Remember that is pulling the mean up. The outliers are pulling the mean in the positive direction. So it's going to be the most or the, the greatest number. Where on the opposite side, left skewed, remember that is negatively skewed because your outliers are pulling your numbers down. So your mean's gonna be at the bottom, okay? If you have perfect symmetry, then they're all the same. Mean, median, mode, all perfectly primo right there in the middle. But your mode is going to be the smallest. If you're right skewed, your median is going to be in the middle. Okay? Remember, because the mode is the number that happens the most. The median is the one in the middle. So it's going to be between the mode and the mean. right? And it's the opposite here. Your mode's going to be the highest. Sorry if y'all can hear my phone going off. I should have silenced it. The mode's gonna be the most, the median's in the middle. Basically all the time, the median's in the middle because what is median referring to? The middle. So it's just about recognizing that if I'm right skewed, that's a positive skewness, meaning your mean is the largest number. Left skewed, meaning negative skewed, your outliers are pulling your mean down. So it's the lowest number. All right, last couple things before we're finished. 
variation. We go into variation a whole lot more in 6b. This is just kind of like dipping our toe in the water. Variation describes how widely the data values are spread out from the center of a data set. The flatter the curve, the higher the variation. The steeper the curve, the lower the variation. Okay, so if I have a really high peak, right, it's narrow, we have low variation. There's not many numbers. Here, it's moderate, okay, here, not much of a, a peak at all. There's high variation because your numbers are spread out. So it's kind of like if this was a piece of string, it's just pulling the string flat because you're having to cover more ground, so to speak. Okay. So if your numbers are all about the same, you're going to have a high peak, right? You're, you know, you're not covering as much distance in your string, so to speak. And then moderate somewhere in the middle, of course. But if you have a lot of different numbers, if like if your numbers range from zero, like a test, if it's zero to 100 and your grades are kind of all over the place, then you have high variation. If you have a test where everyone made about a 70, then that's your low variation, right? The grades could possibly be zero to 100, but if everyone made about a 70, then you're gonna have this like high peak because remember that's frequency. Your peak is telling you your frequency. How many times did the number repeat? Okay. So last, the histogram in the figure shows times between eruptions of a geyser. Oh, sorry. Here, it didn't print off. Let me go find that picture. Oh my goodness. Just a hot second while I pull this out. Sorry about that. Almost. There we go. Sorry, I don't know why that's not there. Let me grab this page out of my binder to show you. Not wanting to come here because. All right. So here's the histogram. Now you know what the heck I'm talking about. The histogram in the figure shows the times between eruptions of a geyser. Think um, like in Yosemite, right? Oh, faithful. Draw a smooth curve that captures its important features, then classify the distribution according to its number of peaks, symmetry, or skewedness, and variation. So here is the graph. Here is our approximate um, sketch. Notice in either case, we can see that we're bimodal because there's two peaks, right? It might go off every 50 seconds or it might go off about every 80, oh, 80 minutes. So 50 minutes every 80 minutes, that's about the time frame that the geyser goes off. So we're bimodal because we have two peaks. We're not symmetric, again, because we have two peaks, right? That symmetry would be if I could cut it in half and basically fold the graph on top of itself and it would be a mirror image on both sides. And then we have a moderate to high variation because here we do have a lower peak. That's kind of the more moderate here, a very high peak that is uh, our, um, well, that's a low variation for this time frame. Sorry, pardon me. So moderate, because you're going from about 50 to 110. So you're covering a lot of minutes. You don't know, am I going to be waiting 40 minutes? Am I going to be waiting almost two hours? We're not really sure, but we can key in on 50 to 80, which gives us the moderate to high variation. There we go. That's what I was trying to say. My brain was not functioning. And that's it. So we will... Um, Pick back up um, with 6B on Wednesday, I believe it is. Let's see. Yep, 6B on Wednesday. Um, in 1300, you probably, you'll be doing more practice with this information. But y'all have an awesome day, and I will see you next class. Toodaloo!